Hey guys, welcome back to another video. And today we're gonna be solving the lead code question, design hash set. Okay, so in this question, we do uh, design a hash set without using any inbuilt hash table libraries. And to be specific, your design should include the fu these functions. So we must have a function which adds a value to our hash set, uh, one function which uh, checks whether that value exists or not, and a function which removes whatever value we give it. So I'm gonna start off by going over the very basics. So let's start off with what even is a hash set and why would you wanna use one? So what exactly is a hash set? And pretty simply put, it's a data, it's a set based data structure which stores value. But you might be asking, well, that just sounds like a list or a set, what's different? Now, what's different about a hash set is the lookup time. So the time it takes to find a certain element is constant time. So it's big O of one. So let's say we were to look at a, a, a list, we would have a lookup time of big O n, but this does it in big O of one, constant time, which is really fast. So this is how, this is why we need a hash set. And this is kind of what it is. Now, how does it actually have such a fast lookup time? And it's important to understand this in order to create our hash set. So this uses something called hashing. So let me just write it down. So hashing. And all hashing is, is think of it as some sort of function which takes in a value and gives you a value for that. To explain this, let's just create our own uh, imaginary hash set. So I'm gonna make a hash set and it's gonna have a length of five. So it's gonna have none, so five nuns basically. Actually, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna uh, define each none as an N. So N stands for none, one, two, three, four, and five. So we have five nuns and that's our hash set, which is currently empty. So now let's look at our first function called adding. Let's say I want to add the number two. So the number I wanna add is two. How can I add two to our hash set? I could just put it in the first index and say I'm done, but we need a constant lookup time of big O one. So in order to do that, we're gonna run this through this, whatever number it is, through our hashing function. Now in real world, uh, in the real world, we have different types of hashing functions, but for the purpose of this question, let's just look at a really basic one. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take whatever number we have. So in this case, we have the number two. So we're gonna take two and we're gonna perform the modulo operation with the length of whatever our hash set is. So the length of our hash set is five. So we're gonna do two mod five and we're gonna get a value. So in this case, we're gonna get a value of two. So what does this value mean? So what this value means is, it, what it's telling us is go to the second index. So we're gonna to go to the second index, so zero, one, two. So this is our second index over here. And in the second index, we're gonna add the number two. So over here, we're gonna add the number two. Let's just take another other example. Let's say we wanna add the number three. So we're gonna do three mod five, and that equals to three. So we're gonna to go to the third index, which is over here, and we're gonna add the number three, okay? But now the question you might be asking is, what if you have some overlapping? What do I mean by that? So what I mean is, let's take the number seven. So we have seven, we're gonna put it inside our hashing function. So we're gonna do seven mod five, right? Pretty simple. And now what is that gonna equal to? That equals two. But we already have something at two. We already have the number two over there. So we go to second index, there's already something. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna append whatever value we have here to that list. So instead of this list just having the value of two, it's gonna have two comma, we're gonna append seven, two comma seven. And that is what we specifically, uh, that's called a bucket. So it holds a set of values. And technically, uh, let's say you have a really hash, a small hash set and you have a ton of data you wanna give it to, you're gonna have a lot of these buckets. And the more buckets you have in general, it's gonna slow down your lookup speed. So you're gonna get farther away from constant space. So in general, lesser the buckets, the better. But I don't think that matters too much for 
what we're doing over here. So let's just focus on this. Okay, so we have 2 comma 7. So that's how we would normally add our uh, numbers or our whatever data we have. Okay, now let's see how can we look up stuff. So just for an example, let's say we have the number 7. So I want to find the number 7. And uh, we know that the number 7 exists, but let's see how we can come to that conclusion methodically. So our first step, like usual, we take whatever number we're looking for, take that and put it into our hashing function. And that function is the same, which is 7 mod 5, the same function, and we get a value of 2 again. So this tells us go to the second index and you might find 7 there. Now, when we go to the second index, we get a list, right? And what we're going to do is we're going to iterate through our list and look for 7. So it's, uh, so first the first element, is that equal to 7? No, 2 is not equal to 7. So now we go to the next element, which is 7, and we found the value 7. And we're going to return true, saying that yes, we found it and it does exist. Now let's just look for a number which does not exist. So for an example, let's take the number 1000. And let's do the same steps as before. So take that number put it into our hashing function. So same function, 1000 divide mod 5, which equals to 0. So this says go to the 0th index. So here we're at the 0th index. And if you look at the 0th index, there's nothing over there. So in that case, we know it's false. And the other case we might have, so let's just say for an example, this has the value of 10. So I would go over here, I would go to the list, look at each element in the list, and in that case also, we're not, we're gonna, we're not gonna find the value 1000. So we're also gonna return false. So this is for looking up. And the next and last one we have is removing. So I don't wanna go over each and every step for removing, but all it is is we're gonna take, we're gonna use the same thing for looking up. So the first step for removing is to look up. So we're first going to look for our value and once we find it, we're going to remove all of its instances. So let's say we go to the number 7. So we're going to run it through our function. We're going to know that it's at the second index. We go to the second index and we're going to go inside of this and we're going to remove the number 7 until that number doesn't exist. So we're going to remove this number over here. 7 doesn't exist anymore and then we're good. So that's how the remove function is going to work. And uh, I'm pretty sure, so once you understand how the theory of it works, I think it's really easy to implement it in code. So let's just see how we can do that in Python. So this over here is the kind of template that we were given to work around with. And my first step is going to be to initialize a variable called size, which is going to be the size of our hash set. And I chose the size to be 10,000. So you might be asking why. So this is the range of values we're given. And I thought 10,000 is a good number because uh, we're, it's going to be big enough that we don't have too many buckets, right? But there's two sides of this. The other side is, what if we're only given a few values? And in that case, that's just a lot of memory which is being wasted. So in order to solve this, uh, people come up with a way where you dynamically change the size depending on how many inputs you're giving it. So for this question, what I want to do is I just want to keep it a little bit simple. So I'm not going to be doing all of that. Okay, so we have a constant size of 10,000. So now I'm going to make our hash set. I'm just going to call it table. And all that is, it's going to be none, like we saw earlier, uh, repeated for how many ever times this is. So uh, multiplied, so this is going to have a length of 10,000 in this case. So now, like we, uh, we were talking about earlier, we always had a function that we would go back to. So I want to make that function over here. So calculate, I'm going to call this function calculate hash value. So in Python, there are inbuilt ways to do this, but like the question said that we're going to not do, use any of them. So over here is going to take the key as an argument. And all we're doing is we're going to return the value of the key mod self dot size. So the key modded by the size, same thing as before. So the first step for our add function, remove function, and the contain function is going to find the hash value of the given key. So I'm just gonna do that by doing, so 
I'll just first do that. So over here and over here. Okay, so hash value HV is so we're gonna call our calculate hash value function. So calculate and over here we're gonna give it the argument of the key, right? So we're just gonna call the key. And so in all of these three cases, we're first finding the hash value. So let's just do the add function first. So what we're going to do is once we find the hash value, we're going to go to that index. So self.table and we're going to go to our hash value. Okay, so now we have two cases. So if our hash value is equal to none, actually, let's just look at that first. So if our hash value is equal to none, we're just going to add the key as a list. So self.table hv is equal to key as a list. Okay, else, so in this case, uh, our that value is not equal to none. So that means that we already have a value in there. So we already have a bucket. And all we're doing is we're gonna append this key to that bucket. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do self.table, we're gonna go to that index, and then we're gonna append our key since there's already an existing bucket. So that's all it is for our add function. So now let's move on to remove. So we found the hash value first thing, and now we're gonna do the same thing. So first we're gonna see if whatever is at that index, so self.table hv is not equal to none. Because if it is equal to none, then there's nothing to remove. The, that thing doesn't even exist. So if it's not equal to none, then in that case, we're gonna do whatever. So we're gonna go inside of a while loop. So all this while loop does is, so it's gonna see, so while key in self.table at the index of hv, self.table remove, wait, self dot self dot table hv dot remove key. Okay, so what is this doing? So why are we going inside of a while statement instead of just calling this function as it is? So the reason we're doing this is when you call remove, all it does, it removes the first instance of that uh, value or element. So let's say we have a bucket which consists of one, two, three, and two, right? And we wanna remove the number two. If we only call the remove method, it would have just removed the number two and we would be left with one, three, and two. But in this case, we wanna remove all instances of two. So we're gonna go into a while loop and we're gonna stay in that while loop until two doesn't exist. So first we're gonna remove the first two, then we're gonna remove the second two, and then we're gonna be done with our function. So that should be it for our remove function method. And now let's go to contains. So what contains does is it looks for a value if that value exists, it's going to say true or else it's going to say false. Okay, so pretty simple. And as usual, first thing we found our hash value. So if self.table, we're going to go to the index of the hash value and we need to check if that's equal to none. So we need to see if it's not equal to none. Because if it is equal to none, that means our answer is false. So we're going to only check if it's not equal to none. And we're going to see if the key exists in that list. So if key in self.table at the index of hv. So if that exists, we're gonna return a uh, true. And if it doesn't exist, we're gonna return false. So instead of writing it like this, we can just simplify and write it return key in self.table hv. So if the key exists, it's gonna return true. If it does not exist, it's gonna return false. And if none of these cases are true, so if the key does not exist, or if the uh, or if or if that element is equal to none, in either of those cases, we're going to return false. So we have return false, and this should be our answer. If you want to go over the code, I'll put the code in the description below, and I'm going to submit this. And as you can see, our submission got accepted. And finally, do let me know if you have any questions regarding this or if you want me to do any lead code questions. And thanks a lot for watching, guys. And do let me know what you thought about the video. Thank you.